When we talk about Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank, it's sometimes difficult to understand the area we're talking about. Here's a story we did several years ago before President Trump's so-called deal of the century and the annexation plan. CBN Scott Ross talked to Israelis who live there and about their commitment to the land and to the Bible. Known to much of the world as the West Bank, Judea and Samaria of the Bible is today home to some 360,000 Jewish Israelis and at least 1.4 million Palestinian Arabs. Shiloh. Shiloh. Okay. The first capital of ancient Israel, the place where the tabernacle stood for 369 years. David Rubin is the former mayor of Shiloh, the place pronounced Shiloh in hundreds of biblically named places in America. We talked together overlooking the route in which the biblical patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have traveled. This is where Joshua stood before the Israelites and he said, How long will you wait before coming to take possession of the land that the Lord God of your fathers has given you? This is the place where the woman Hannah came to pray for a son. The son who was born from her prayers was Samuel the prophet, who grew up into prophecy in Shiloh, along with the people of Israel. And that is the issue that remains today. This is the land that God gave you. Reuben's commitment to the land came at a personal price when he and his son were ambushed by terrorists while traveling on the road home. The car was hit by a massive hail of bullets. I was shot in my leg. My son was shot in the head. Is your son still alive today? Uh, thank God my son is alive today. He had a miraculous recovery. The bullet missed his brain stem by one millimeter. Why do people choose to live in the middle of the threat of violence, their children, so forth, being exposed to this? We've come home. We're fulfilling prophecy in these times. Some 230 Israeli families live in Shiloh today. 35 years after it was re-established in 1978. And yet Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas said recently that a future Palestinian state in this area must be completely free of Jews. How do you feel about the land for peace uh, negotiations? You give up the land, there's going to be peace. It's time for a new plan which is called Peace for Peace. We extend our hand in peace, they extend their hand in peace, we shake it and we have peace, we sign a peace treaty, and all is well. Shiloh is in biblical Samaria, north of Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria, including the Jordan Valley, is 79 miles long and between 19 and 34 miles wide. To the south of Jerusalem and Bethlehem is a large block of Jewish communities in Judea called the Gush Etzion, in another part of what the world calls the West Bank. We're at the highest point in Gush Etzion. We're on the, the backbone of the hills that control the lowlands in both directions. And that is the Mediterranean Sea and the coastal plain, Tel Aviv, Ashdod, Ashkelon, down to Gaza. And we can see the rockets come out of there. And when you look this way, when we look east, um, we're looking towards Jordan. First we have the hills here, which belong to Gush Etzion. They go from Hebron all the way up to Jerusalem, and there's Jordan on the other side. That's it, that's all we got. This is the width, <laughs> and we're on top. Ruthie Lieberman is a wife and mother. Originally from Ohio, she is raising her family in a community called Alon Shavut in Gush Etzion. Jews established several farming communities here before the State of Israel in 1948. But during Israel's War of Independence, they were destroyed and the residents killed or driven away. After the 1967 Six-Day War, the Jews returned to rebuild here. Who are your neighbors? Um, I think having Lebanon in the north, Syria, to the uh, northeast, but then we come around and have Egypt to the south. We're not, we're not in a great area. There are 24 Muslim states surrounding Israel from Morocco to Iran, more than 8 million square miles of land, more than 500 times the size of Israel where some half a billion people live. Judea and Samaria stand between Israel's major population centers and the Arab world. Without it, in some places, Israel is just nine miles wide. The Arabs, many factions, Palestinians, hate the Jews. Do you hate the Arabs? I don't think the Arabs who live nearby in the village over there, I don't think they hate me. Mm -hmm. I think they're taught to hate me. Twenty years ago, then-Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin 
and PLO leader Yasser Arafat signed the Oslo Accords and shook hands on the White House lawn. And still, there is no peace. You see that, that this could possibly become a future Palestinian state. If it were to become a Palestinian state, I would imagine that it would be because there's some huge breakthrough and the whole world believes that now we have peace in this part of the world. And mm -hmm. if that's true, then I can live here. Mm -hmm. I'm Jewish. I bought the land and I should be able to keep my home. In every talks that we hear, we're out of the picture. We'll have to pack up and go. The scriptures teach us to pray for Jerusalem, pray for Israel. Do you think it makes any difference? I hope that all of you continue to pray for Jerusalem every day. It strengthens us. It strengthens our psyche. It strengthens our hopes. We know that we're not alone.